Today, I want to show you guys how I recreated The Walls Are Way Too Thin by Holly Humberstone. There's a lot of really fun, like almost 90s indie pop layers to this guy. But before we jump into that, uh, let me introduce myself. My name is Seth. I produce indie pop music full time. I work as a freelance music producer, helping artists make their songs sound like this. So if you make music in this style and you think we'd have fun working on a project together, check the link down in the description. Also, the reason that I'm reproducing this song specifically is because it was the one that was voted on in the Discord. So if you want to have a say on what songs get reproduced next, check out that. But yeah, let's just jump into it. So let's start out with the guitars. So first we have these acoustics. Nothing crazy. I will say I tracked these on an acoustic that was in D standard. So like a regular guitar tuned like D standard down, even though I put a capo on and I was playing in F sharp major, which is the key of the song, because I wanted to get like the slinky feeling of the strings. I didn't want this taut string sound. I don't know how to describe it, but like anybody who's like detuned their guitar knows it's like when you detune a guitar like to a lower tuning, it's not just that the notes are lower. It's like the strings are a little bit more slinky and buzzy. So I thought that, that kind of helped the vibe. Uh, these guys are double tracked. Let me turn off the bus real quick. Uh, they're very simple, just EQs and compression. I used honestly a really cheap acoustic on this. It's not that important to me with this style, how like high quality of an acoustic it is. I just used a pencil condenser uh, cause I feel like the way that it like focuses in on the sound, it lends itself a little bit better when you're double tracking acoustics. The big thing that you run into when you're double tracking is there's like a really big, like low mid range buildup. And so any way you can sort of like taper that off will help a bit. And then I threw them into RC20 on the bus. And then add another EQ just to shape it a bit more. I wanted almost like this weird, like scooped feel with them just because the rest of the track is very mid range heavy. And so just getting these guys to sort of like add as a percussive layer sizzling on the high end and then like really, really low mid range. I felt like that was the best way to use them. And then my favorite layers are these guys. These are really low tuned electrics. So for these, I used my uh, 335. Honestly, similar to the acoustics, uh, I really down tuned this guy a lot. It's in C sharp standard right now with tens on it. And then I drop tuned it again for this. So when it goes down to that four that you actually get like a low B, almost like a baritone. F sharp, B. And I just, I love the way it sounds so much. I'm basically just holding a power chord like up here. It's a weird power chord thing that I picked up when I was doing like metalcore stuff a long time ago. It's just a normal drop tune power chord, but on what is the third string of the chord, you go up two frets and you get this sort of five add nine thing going on which is a fancy way of saying you're playing your root, your fifth, and then your second, an octave above. I'm, I think I might keep this guy drop tuned as low as it is here because it's a really cool texture. I did use the bridge pickup on this, and I think that's kind of important. Uh, when you get stuff that's really low like this, it can get really flubby really quickly, especially if you're on the neck pickup. But yeah, I just used the uh, Andy in a Bottle preset. Uh, messed with the input on this tube compressor, which is basically just a, a way to adjust how much it's compressing after the fact. But then, yeah, I turned off the spring reverb, and it's a pretty standard patch after that. Um, I just used a little bit the towel course to get that warbliness to it. And then uh, on the bus, I just threw this basic channel strip to high pass it a bit because I felt like it was a little bit too much. So if I play it here without the channel strip, then with. It's just using this filter to remove a ton of that super low end. And also this compressor is just tapping it on the top so that it doesn't peak anything. And then we have this guitar layer here, which I used my Jazz Master for. 
which is just running into this uh, creamy snowflakes preset. It's just this, this ambient little trail that pops in every once in a while. You really hear it in like verse two. Um, and then again, I've been sort of going back to using channel strips for a lot of my mixing because you can get a really solid patch with just like a high pass filter, a low pass filter, and then a limiter to keep it consistent. I'm pretty sure that's all I'm doing here. So if I solo all the guitars, they sound like this. Like you can hear there's already like a ton of like 90s texture to it. And I feel like if I had to pinpoint Holly Humberstone's style, I would say it would be like a 90s take on like modern indie pop. Like the 1975 is very 80s based. There's a lot of 90s stuff in Holly Humberstone. After that, we will go to our synths, which this is probably the synth that most people will recognize from the song. So in terms of notes, it's actually pretty simple. You just have this loop that goes over and over again, which is just the first two notes of whatever chord is playing, the root and the fifth. And then after those two notes, it'll either go up to the two or the three. And then a couple repetitions down low. And that's basically the whole thing. The only difference is it will uh, lower these two notes to whatever chord is playing, so. So you can kind of see like the chord progression here in the lower hand. It's just a one, four, and then a six, walking down to a five, back down to the four. But yeah, there's several layers to this patch. So here, let me turn off bus processing. So the first one I started with is this lower pluck, which is this uh, cicadas preset from a reverb machine. Just a really solid like Jupiter thick patch, not really weird or filtery at all. And then we have that same patch in octave up. And then those two together. Again, that's like 90% of the texture right there is this sort of thick, weird, sort of quirky base. I love it. And then um, we just layered it up with a couple of other textures. So we have another reverb machine patch called EG Pluck. That to me, that got like the sort of filtery, like quacky sound, but also a little bit of that like VHS vibe. And then here at the top, we have another patch called Different Ways. This was more to get sort of like the chorusy richness out of the patch and sort of add some width. Also, most of the reverb of the patch is just on this one. So you can actually keep these layers pretty tight from a reverb standpoint because only this top one has it. But when you play them all together. If I turn off the filter. If I turn off the top chorus one. If I turn off the high pluck. If I turn off the low pluck. Like you can hear all of them are like kind of vital to the sound. They just add like different textures and stuff. And then I threw it into a little bit of distinct, which is just adding some even harmonics and then a little bit of high passing to get rid of some of the really harsh low end. Drives it a little bit, but also gives it a little bit more of that aged VHS feel because there isn't as much high end. Then we also have this ambient pad. Which is just sort of acting as like a resonance thing. It's like, well, here, I'll just show you guys. If I turn off everything, it just sounds like this. It's this 40s very own keys preset in contact. 
But yeah, you can hear like it's a keys sound, but it's kind of weird. I then threw it into a really long ROM reverb, which I then threw into Decapitator and just dimed it. Just to get it to like distort and hold on to as many of those weird like resonant frequencies that normally like Rhodes keyboards have. And then I just basically band passed it to that specific frequency range that I wanted it to focus on as a pad. And then threw it into the ROM reverb send. It's this weird texture that's just going, but it's uh, it's tame enough to where it's not like destroying everything else, which is basically the same technique I used for this um, this lead line that comes in on the course too. It's not exactly what they played melody wise, but you can hear it like doing these like little runs and stuff like that. But it's basically just the uh, stage 73 from Arturia. Running into the same kind of decapitator distortion on a, a different preamp, though, and then just high pass so that there's not a bunch of rumble, but not as tightly band passed on the uh, the high end. And then the last thing that I noticed, which it's a little bit in the intro, but uh, there's this weird like vocoder effect that. <laughs> Like you can barely hear it. They'll use it for like little transitions. It, I'm, I'm almost like enunciating it more here than they do in the actual song, but you'll hear like a, which is almost like a mumble instead of like an actual vocal part, but it will also be like vocoded and in key. And it's an interesting vibe, but uh, it, it's barely there. So I just threw it here because I, I wanted to talk about it in a video. For bass, we are just standing by the solid P bass running into neural D DSP Parallax. Little crunchy, little gritty, enough to get the pick to sort of like come out a bit, but not overbearing. Also, I, I'm going to be honest, I just got Serum. Like, I just got it. And so I found this like Reese patch on Splice to sort of handle some of the sub low end. And then I just band passed it here. I'm liking it so far. Uh, honestly, I tend to be pretty slow when it comes to like getting new plugins. I will see a bunch of people being like, you need to buy this new plugin right now. And I'll be like, oh, I'll, I'll wait a few years and, and see if anybody's still using it. And I feel like I still see a bunch of people using Serum. It's not like the new kid on the block in terms of synths, but it's still really good. And you get the benefit of having a bunch of really awesome presets already ready for you to go. Whereas I feel like when you get it, like the second it comes out, you kind of have to wait for a bit in order for like the community side of like people making presets to actually get the ball rolling. But yeah, through these guys into this S quick strip from Kive, just to sort of boost the low end a little bit. Also, there was like a tiny bit of like transient that was like not fun on the picked bass. So I just pulled it back a little bit. Also just the tiniest bit of rounding compression to sort of make it even. And then the last thing we have to look for are the drums. Uh, this is a really stripped song, if I'm gonna be honest. All the elements that are here are like really intentional and really well put together, but there's not a lot of them. So let's start with our main kick and snare sound. The thing I noticed about this kick was that it was very synthetic compared to the snare. Like it felt like there was a very synthetic kick and a very real snare happening. So it's this uh, BBL3 underscore kick underscore vinylized from this uh, bedroom beats and lo-fi hip hop pack on Splice in case you're looking for it. The first snare is a Leno snare smash V2. And then underneath that, we have this guy which is the BBL snare flat single EQ'd a little bit differently, but I've also gone into the, uh, the delay compensation in Ableton and I'm making it hit a little bit before like the main snare hits. And then underneath that, we're also adding in our Leno fat snare, which I'm mainly using just to get that sort of like sort of lower mid range feel because I felt like the snare sound was a little bit like, it was good in the high end, but it needed a little bit lower balls to it, I guess. And then I just threw on this TS Elements hat loop with uh, a little bit of EQ just to try to make it sound darker. 
I thought that it was a little bit too uh, bright when I initially threw it in. Using a little bit of uh, Ableton drum bus, which if I turn it off, then I turn it on. It just adds a bunch of beef to it. And yeah, that is everything. So if I take all of those guys together, they sound like this. But yeah, that's the track. Again, if you want to vote on what track I recreate next, uh, go to the Discord and join it and you'll be able to vote. There will be a channel called Track Recreation and you can just leave an emoji on it and vote on what song you want me to recreate next. Or you can leave a comment uh, for a suggestion that you don't see. Hopefully you guys enjoy this video and yeah, see you guys next week.